Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This is a very foggy morning. I tell you, it's awesome how the dew is just dripping on everything. And the Lord speaks of that in His Word. It's like the cloud. We're in the cloud. So awesome. You know, this is such a good devotional today. It's going to bring us back to square one, actually. Where we really need to be focused. Basically, coming back to our first love. And knowing what's important in life. And the name of this devotional is Unadorned Life. And it's got several authors, and I will mention those as we go through. The scripture here is 1 Chronicles 4.23. These were the potters, and those that dwelt among plants and hedges. There they dwelt with the king for his work. Let's go into that a little further. These were the potters. The potters were those to mold into a form through squeezing into shape, fashion, make. The potters made the vessels, didn't they? They molded them into the form that they needed to be. Through the squeezing into shape. Now just listen to all these definitions of this. Fashioning and making. And those that dwelt or remained settled were established, inhabited among plants. Among the plants, among the gardens, among the things that grow. And hedges, enclosures. Now get a picture of all this, and then you will understand this devotional. There they dwelt with the king for his work, for his deputy, deputy ship, that is, ministry, property. Isn't that interesting? It's talking about spiritual. You know, and no matter, someone may be feeling insignificant in what God has them do. That they're not doing anything or not contributing at all. But see, the thing is, that's the wrong mindset. Because right where we are, the Lord has us planted where we are. Stationed where we are for a purpose. And basically, if we're doing our job and what God is calling us to do, we're basically the potters in that place that God has put us. We're the potters that God is using to mold into the form His people, as we speak the word, mold into the form He wants them in. Through the squeezing into the shape, sometimes the word is hard, sometimes it really, the hammer comes down. And sometimes the vice grip is on to squeeze into shape, to fashion, to make. And that's what we are in the place God has us. And we're to dwell there, remain there, just be settled in the fact God has us there, that he's established us, and we're, in, we're inhabiting where he's got us, among the plants, among the garden, and the enclosures. See, God puts enclosures around his people where he has them, of protection. 
it's awesome. When I, when I was looking at this devotion, I was just weeping because the Lord was just showing me. <laughs> no need to fret about anything, about where God has you or what He has you doing. Just obey Him. Just obey what He says. And there they dwelt with the king. Anywhere we are, we're dwelling with the king. Deputy ship. That is ministry. Anywhere we are, we're with the king. It should be that way. For this devotional today, Unadorned Life. Anywhere and everywhere we may dwell with the king for his work. We may be in a very unlikely and unfavorable place for this. It may be in a literal country life with little enough to be seen of the goings of the king around us. It may be among the hedges of all sorts, hindrances in all directions. It may be furthermore with our hands full of all manner of pottery for our daily task. You know, where God has us, maybe we don't see a lot of the goings of the king around us. But there can still be the goings of the king in our midst where we are. In the garden where he has us. And we need to remain where he has us and be steadfast in the faith, knowing if he wants to move us, he will do just that. And we don't need to worry about it. It may be, furthermore, with our hands full of all manner of pottery for our daily tasks, you know, caught up in the daily life. No matter. The king who placed us there will come and dwell there with us. We need not be concerned about that at all. The king that placed us where we are, he will come and dwell there with us. The hedges are right, or he would soon do away with them. In other words, the enclosures that we may feel around us or whatever, they're right, or he would soon do away with them. And it does not follow that what seems to hinder our way may not be for its very protection. So what we think might be an enclosure of hindrance is actually for our protection. So we just need to be content in where he has us and what he has us doing and be sure to obey him if he changes those plans in any way. And as for the pottery... Why, that is just exactly what he has seen fit to put into our hands. And therefore it is, for the present, his work. See? And as for the pottery, okay, that's the vessel, isn't it, that the potters mold. So whatever pottery, you know, person or whatever God places in our life for him to use us to flow through us as the potter to mold that vessel into what he wants it to be by speaking by preaching by ministering so whatever pottery as for the pottery, whatever or whoever that might be, why that is just exactly what he has seen fit to put into our hands. 
and therefore it is for the present his work. Go back. Now I want you to listen to this. This is, and that is by Francis Ridley Havergal. Go back to thy garden plot, sweetheart. Go back till the evening falls. And bind thy lilies and train thy vines till for thee the master calls. Go make thy garden fair as thou canst. Thou workest never alone. Perhaps he whose plot is next to thine will see it and mend his own. By example. The colored sunsets and starry heavens, the beautiful mountains and the shining seas, the fragrant woods and painted flowers are not half so beautiful as a soul that is serving Jesus out of love. In the wear and tear of common, unpoetic life. And that's by Faber. Isn't that awesome? What is the Lord telling us in this little poem here? Go back to your first love in that garden. Tend that garden. Train those vines. Till the master calls. And make that garden as fair as you can. Because we don't ever work alone. And maybe he whose plot is next to thine, or maybe those that are watching you, will see it. This fair garden, beautiful, full of life. And mend their own. They'll look at their own garden in a spiritual way. And see that it's grown up with vines choked off, weeds, unkept, untended. And they'll look over here and see this one green, flourishing, fruitful. And they'll want that. And they'll mend their own. The colored sunsets and starry heavens, the beautiful mountains, and the shining seas, the fragrant woods and painted flowers, listen, are not half so beautiful. Those things are really beautiful, but they're not even half so beautiful as a soul is that is serving Jesus out of love. In the wear and tear of common, unpoetic life. Isn't that awesome? The most saintly spirits are often existing in those who have never distinguished themselves as authors or left any memorial of themselves to be the theme of the world's talk, but who have led an interior angelic life, having borne their sweet blossoms unseen like the young lily in a sequestered veil on the bank of a limpid stream. And that is by Ken Elm Digby. Isn't that awesome? You know, people don't understand that the most thing that God wants is intimacy with Him. In that garden that he's placed us in. Intimacy with him. You know, we don't have to be distinguished as authors or known. Leave any kind of memorial. 
for a theme in the world's talk. But it is that interior life that is bearing the sweet blossoms unseen by man. on that beautiful bank of that stream spiritually so wherever the Lord has us let us know that whether it be in prayer if we're in intercession for someone or he brings someone across our path that day or whatever he wants to use us as a spiritual potter in that person's life to help mold and form, squeeze if necessary, fashion into the image of God. And the Lord uses his vessels many times to do that by speaking, by ministering the truth of his word. And we can be content and dwell and remain where he has us at the time. Dwell with the king because he's with us. Feel his presence right now so very strong. He is with us. We will dwell with the King for his work, his work, his ministry, what he wants. Hallelujah. Lord, I pray that you will seal this word, Lord. Don't let the enemy steal the seed and don't let people forget this message that hear it today. Let it grow. Bear fruit. Father, I just pray for each and every person today you know, maybe some of your weary ones, Lord, that you give them renewed strength, renewed hope. Seeing what you're having them do in their life is your work. And also to make sure it is your work, Lord. Give us all keener discernment, Lord, to know that. To know what your work is versus our work or just the busyness of the world's work. Let us all go back to our first love, Lord. Where nothing else mattered but you. And I thank you for your mercy and your grace to show us all that, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen.